Wow, that was, uh, you know, <laughs> Nigel I, I, and Gene, I must admit that I'm starting to get a little bit sick and tired of that jingle, to be honest, because uh, <laughs> I think I've heard it two times for every session, and we are on the second last session of this week with, is it 36 sessions, Gene? Yeah, 36, this is number 36, so and, yeah, and, I need and another G chin. <laughs> yeah, and Gene, you know that you always say that nothing is finished before it's finished, right? Uh, but I disagree with you because nothing is finished before we have put uh, the great uh, finishing enhancement that Nigel is going to talk about. And Nigel, you just have to turn on the sound because I, I turned off your sound for a second. <laughs> and you know what, Morton? 100% agree. I actually just said to Nigel, I went to Drooper and I saw Skodex. And i got to tell you, you know that love at first sight? i got to say, I just... Oh. Opportunity, opportunity, and wow. So mm. love it. Can't wait to get stuck in and hear what's happening and you know what you guys are doing because I think there's just such a big place for it. But uh, I, before you say something, uh, Nigel, I, I love to get started with you, but I just have to, I just have to add one thing that is in, in uh, I don't know if it's important, but uh, your good colleague, Franz, from uh, Switzerland, yeah. I had the pleasure to be driving with him uh, in a car for like, Three uh, days. So imagine how much talking about everything that is uh, from the eerie to personal things. So it's uh, wonderful. But one of the things he did uh, the very first time I met him, he was uh, actually trying to almost sell me a machine because he said, "Morton, it's not about acquisition cost. It's not about operational cost. It's about the value it brings to print." And then he started to show calculate, and you only need these few sheets a day in, to pay for the machine, and everything else is profit. I take that as uh, the journey that you also want, right? Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's uh, our mission in life is you know to to deliver digital enhancements, to digitize enhancement uh, through inkjet technology uh, in the industry. So, I think we, we've all been around the industry long enough now. We all know the nice, sexy front end of a print shop where we see the nice printing presses. And then when we talk about finishing, which for me already is a bit of a negative connotation, we think about finishing at the back. It's kind of like walking into a museum a little bit. And I've been walking into those museums since I was 14 years old, since my father used to work for Heidelberg. And he used to drag me along as a schoolboy in the summer holidays. What are you doing tomorrow? And if I didn't give an answer in three seconds, you're coming to a print shop with me. And uh, that's, kind of, I suppose I have ink in my blood somehow, you know. So you sound like my childhood too. I think also my parents also in print industry forever. Exactly. So that was the highlight, kind of the print shop. Exactly. So, and yeah. go, go ahead, Morton, go ahead. No, no, no. So, no, so, so, so you, you're born into the industry because, you know, that sometimes people say to, to me that, are you born into the industry? No, my father was a banker. My mom was a nurse. And to be <laughs> honest, uh, I got into this. But I'm, I, I, I think people understand that I'm a little bit of a geek. So I actually try to understand every little process of right. everything. Sometimes it's like, boof. Yeah. Absolutely. So funny enough, I heard something quite funny yesterday. Somebody said to me, um, that there was a guy in print and he said, so how did you get into print? And he said, my father. And I feel like going home, knocking on the door, and when he opens it, I'm going to punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because here we are. But you see, it's uh, funny because uh, I said to my kids for fun, I have three kids. Uh, my daughter is uh, 27, and, and then I have uh, two boys, uh, 16 and, and 13. So I said to my daughter, okay, are you, are, do you want to take all the responsibility and with Inkish when you – you know, when this is yeah, time. And she was like, no, 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 no. And then I was like, to so my next son, I said, so will you do it? No, 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 no. And the last one, he doesn't really like to go to school too much. And he said, yeah, I can do it. No, okay, okay. <laughs> hey. There's something in that. There's something in that. But, but so, coming back to what, what we were talking about there, you know, we, you mentioned this thing and you used that word about finishing. I always look at it in the opposite way. It's actually the beginning of it. You know, as if, if I want to be a little rude, maybe a little provocative, I always say, Putting ink on paper is easy. Come on, guys. We've been doing it for many, many years. It's, it's you know, when I think back to my childhood, if I really want to be rude, it's, come on, it's potato printing, right? <laughs> um, you know. And, and that I'm was sure, rude. That yeah, was rude. Know, <laughs> you know, so we all know that. And it, it's what do we do beyond that? How do we take it another step? And how with inkjet and digital technology can we transform that from a museum-type process which, you know, again, I can speak to my father each weekend. He's nearly 90 very soon. 
and he will tell me, do you still set up a hot foil stamping machine by moving all of these little tools and taking out one piece and resetting it up and spending many hours doing this? And I will look at him and say, yes, it's still like that today. It's a little more efficient, but in principle, it's pretty similar. Mm -hmm. And then I see when I show him the sort of wonderful things, let's take an example here. I show him something like this as a kind of crazy uh, digital example. And you think, well, you know what? That took three minutes to produce. <laughs> and, and that's the game changer. That's yeah. the difference in life, yeah? yeah? And Jean was already talking when we were setting up. She said, yeah, I know some of your team and, and I know Skodix. And when we came to Drupal, it's a wow. And you know, actually at Skodix, we used to run a competition and we have a nice slide of some students which came to one of our booths. I think it was in print in Chicago, probably 2014, something like that. And it's capturing that moment when people see something they interact with it by touching it and they go, oh, wow. Mm. And we have a great picture of three students, three young girls, which saw some amazing samples. And, you know, they, they sort of reached into, uh, I'm sorry, I'm out of a shot there a little bit, mm. but they reached and So we're looking at one of our very famous uh, Skodik sample yeah, books. It is so we great, have all yeah, these sort of wonderful effects in them. Mm. And it's that wow moment because it's exactly what we're all trying to create, mm. whether that's in, in brand marketing, whether that's in retail, um, it's it's a big big part of that discussion right now. Mm. I can't help think about it because yesterday uh, Pat McGrew and Jean and I we had a, a session about uh, print samples and how they are used. Right. Um, and did, just did, as a, did, did they get there on time? That was the no, they no. no they didn't. And I said actually okay. mail to all of you because we we I actually. Got it. Yeah, but we turned it into more like a talk session, then we will sure. do it afterwards. Sure. But uh, we have, uh, for the audience, we have made a lookbook that we will play in a second. So when, when yeah. Nigel and I talk, we can still see some of the great samples uh, from some of your customers. But the reason why I was mentioning this is just because we spoke about the role of the print sample in order to, um, first of all, to get that effect, as you just mentioned. Yes. But it's also because... The, the higher value this creates for the end user, that could be in packaging, that could be in, you know, all kind of Absolutely. of, uh, of uh, environments where it's suitable to do. It brings Correct. a lot of value to, I mean, not just to the printer who produces, but to the brand owner and maybe even to the customer because we don't really need anything today. So when yeah. we buy stuff today, we need to relate to the product and the company that is facilitating this emotional effect, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, it's 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 exactly that, you know, you're talking about here, whether we talk about web two business models, web mm -hmm. to print, web to pack, mm -hmm. where it's kind of easy to understand in a B2C business model how I can make some business cards, which I just happen to have my business cards, really? of course, ah. here. Oh. And uh, just there's, to be. there's a surprise. <laughs> and, you know, our business cards as well. You can't give them out the anymore, can you? So. you know, no, that's true. You know, they're always, uh, you know, different versions of business cards. Fantastic. But, you know, those those are something which is it's very easy to see how I can create a lot of value as a printer to my customer that might want to buy his business cards to look as good as he can. B, that's B2C. But in a B2B packaging environment where we are very far away from the consumer with brands in between and distribution uh, and so on, it's much more complex about how we do that. The result is the same. What we're trying to achieve is the same. But the amount of value we can deliver is a different as, a, as an amount, but also the values you deliver are different, whether that's uh, supply chain streamlining. You know, we always talk about shorter runs when we talk about digital. Uh, but I think it's more about agility. That's been the more common word I hear in the last couple of years. Mm. And especially when I speak to some of our packaging customers, you know, I had a lot of calls in March last year when we started the European lockdowns. And I was talking to all our packaging folding carton customers and agility was the word that they were using. The fact that they were able to react and change because mm -hmm. their customers were saying, hold on, I don't need order A anymore. I need order B. <clears throat> 10 minutes later, I need less of B and more of C. And in order to fulfill that and deliver smaller, bigger quantities, different designs, super, super quick, they needed a digital technology in order to be able to deliver that. So lots of different values around that, really, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, while we're talking, why don't we just, uh, I can't remember the, how long time this, the lookbook takes, but it, there's no sound sure. on it. So why don't we just no, uh, let okay. it play can, in the yeah. background? Yeah, I think it's uh, Absolutely. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, Nigel, just a little bit. Uh, I mean, obviously, you you have a uh, you're born into the industry, and and you have a lot of uh, knowledge about uh, what's uh, what's important here. Um, I can't help think about because one of the things that I I actually think I said that to both uh, France and and uh, and Robert and also when when uh, uh, when Lynn was working with you uh, yes. that I like things that Scodex does hundred percent and yes. I know hundred percent also that you can do things that you cannot do in um, in analog of course that's right but I also to some extent sometimes believe that what you do is a replication of what you can do in analog i mean is is there not a room also in scotix world to do something that is like uh, you know i'll say something uh, you know something that can where you, where you think of it as completely entirely new way of enhancements uh, i there, mean there is there is do you understand yeah. what i mean absolutely i mean you know there's a kind of few categories i would i would simply say are mm -hmm. we trying to replicate something like for like um, and that's mm -hmm. that's quite challenging because honestly, analog processes do things extremely well. There's never a mm -hmm. question about the quality of what they produce. Mm -hmm. Our question or the question we pose is how you can do it and how efficiently you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just to kind of put a spin on that, I always like to say that digital processes are really good at simplifying complexity. So if I that's take true. complex mm -hmm. job, simple job in, in analog, they can be like this, set up cost per sheet initial, but in digital, yeah, practically the same. So I, I like simplifying complexity with digital. Now I can do things which are maybe putting a little spin on it, doing it a little differently than they were done previously. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it's about what could I do now which I could never do before or never mm -hmm. dream of doing before. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we always like to show those examples. It's always the one which gets me. When I, the very first time I went to Skodix, and I asked the operator of the Skodix Ultra Press, you know, what's the process to set up the foil, to switch the foil on? And he said, well, uh, let me show you. And he leant across and pressed the button. <laughs> and keep in mind, I'm coming from an environment where to put foil on something in packaging, I need three to four hours. Yes. Quite and a few guy, processes and yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this guy, I'll never forget the name was Patrick and we spoke about it a lot afterwards. He pressed the button and I said, okay, but what do you have to do next? He said, next, we just have to wait for the sheet to come out of the end and it's done. And, that uh, and it's good. dry, it's dry when it comes out. Everything done, Every, but, just but like you, you're seeing here. But yeah. you missed But you missed the important thing he should have said, but, and then I just had to click invoice, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. Well, actually, if, if we're printing it, we probably, if it's B2C, we invoice first, right? Yes, but, you know, And that's the smartest thing about B2C. The first thing that happens is you get paid as a printer. I get Show me your money, huh? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you remember that, Gene? Show me the money campaign. <laughs> we had that as a campaign. But tell me, um, so surely now, I mean, you guys must be thriving because every brand wants to stand up right now. And there's just such a great opportunity, isn't there? There is, there is. I mean, a lot of it's about differentiation, you know, and it is that combination of what can you do, which is the same, so it's replacement. And then there is what we call value add, which is doing something new or doing something different. And on that part of it, the new and the different, that's a big part of the discussion. Um, you know, and whether that's a brand owner discussion or whether that print or packaging company, um, a lot of it is about, well, what can I do we couldn't do before? Oh, and it's wow. not only technically, it's not only the results of what we're seeing on the nice video that you guys put together, but it's also, I might be doing the same thing, but I might be offering it differently. So instead of having to produce tens of thousands of something, mm -hmm. I can now enable hundreds or a thousand of something, which is now economically viable. Or I could deliver it more quickly. Yeah, mm. you know, variability as well within that. Yeah, that's mm. another aspect. I I uh, I made an over oh, the Skype interview with um, uh, with your boss a couple of uh, months ago. Ah, you did uh, with Ellie, right? Yeah, yeah. precisely. Yeah, and uh, I, I can't help thinking because I mean, uh, though everything what you do is also focused. I mean, of course, it's focused around business, obviously. Right. Right. But it must also have some effect that you're in in an environment where things are really pretty. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you know that, but before I knew about Scodex, I didn't really because I'm not native English, as you can hear. So I was like, I was looking for what words to use about what you do. 
So I was actually using uh, the beautification. Uh, I just yes. called it the beautification, basically, sure. Sure. <laughs> instead of an enhancement. And and I remember that was uh, when one of the first times I spoke to Skolix people. Ah, oh, you're the guy with the beautification kind of things. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, and I mean, I if we if, if we think about it in uh, you know in French, it's it's embellishment, yeah. um, which is you know we can understand yeah. as English speakers. In yeah. Italian, it's nobilize, nobilizione. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it enhancement, digital yeah. enhancement. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's many ways of really what we're saying is we're trying to take something from its but, regular form into the next level. But That's Nigel, what we're trying to do. But, Nigel, you have just the one problem. Now, it, both Italian and French sound so much better than, than English, right? <laughs> <laughs> they generally do. You know, and uh, I can tell you one thing for sure. The food is definitely always better. Uh, and I can say that as an English person. I don't mind to admit that. Okay. So, Nigel, I, I do a lot of um, consulting and training out there. And actually, I've got some of your samples in my pack just to show right. people about what's possible. Right. And it's just, I'm going to add this in. And, um, you know, first thing when people do, they look at this and goes, oh, that that's like, wow, it must be yeah. so damn expensive. So, you know, is yeah. that where cost per response comes in? Because yeah, your brain absolutely. stands out yeah. and because you're putting that wow factor into it, you're going to get a better response. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so first of all, what is the what is the the value we can deliver to the printer's customer and what could, do they get out of that? Um, and then secondly, what is the on cost? You know, what do they now have to spend in order to have the standard sheet into the Scudix enhanced sheet? Mm -hmm. And there is an on cost. Of course there is. We need some equipment. We need consumables. We need to look after that equipment. So the, the total cost of ownership for that, it brings something. But what we talk about in the end is typically in the range of a few centimes of a euro per sheet. Mm -hmm. On one sheet, there could be multiple products. So we might end up with something like one centime of a euro per item. Um, and then, actually, if we consider uh, what are we able to sell that on for, can really depend. In a in a B two B model, perhaps that's not so high because we're dealing with very tough, uh, aggressive uh, uh, situations in retail. But then, in a B two C, of course, that can be very different in that sense mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, yeah. the reason why I was mentioning Eli in the interview I did before is because uh, one of the things uh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do that at that time was also because you. Uh, kind of broke down uh, having uh, uh, equipment that was only from a very high starting acquisition exactly cost, that. right? So yes. you have brought in your, your product offerings. Yeah. Can we you did. can you talk a little bit yeah. because you introduced that uh, Ultra Series, right? As far as I remember. So, That's exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually the, the, the Ultra itself was coming out in around, I guess it was IPEX 2014 when we launched the first platform. The platform evolved over a number of years as we learned how to improve the technology. And we created something, you know, very smart in a sense by making it better, faster, more efficient, more capable. But ultimately, what we also did, unfortunately, the price increases as well at the same time. So in the beginning of 2019, we decided to have two levels of technology mm -hmm. and we launched what we called Ultra 101 and Ultra 202. More mm. entry level technology, extremely capable, similar functionalities. But if a customer wanted the ultimate machine, which had even more functionality, at a 202. What we started to learn from that is we started to understand that certain types of printers were looking for different things. If you're a book printer, maybe you want to focus on thinner materials. If you're a packaging printer, we need to talk about format. Um, if I'm a Web2 printer, I need workflow automation. And what we did on the 29th of September last year was launch a portfolio of six brand new products. Yeah. And they are the Ultra 1000 series going from 1000 all the way up to 6000, one, two, three, four, five, six. The first two presses are the commercial printing presses. So that's the one and the 2000. The next two, three and four are the web two presses, print and packaging. Mm -hmm. And then the last two, uh, sorry, the last last presses and five and six mm -hmm. are dedicated to packaging, but also as the format gets bigger on the 6000 becomes a B1, mm -hmm. uh, 106 by 76 format can be very interesting for larger commercial printers, of industrial course. book printers, mm -hmm. um, and just basically people looking for a more industrialized approach as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's what we did then, Morton. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, I, I can't help think about that at some point... Uh, I mean, 
it is an inkjet technology combined with foils, uh, right. and the foil is is uh, at, uh, using some kind of ad adhesive, right? Um, and I was just thinking, uh, if you have, I mean, because of the machines, you say that you have, for example, digital and offset uh, deliveries to the to, to yeah. your Scotix uh, Ultra Series line. What about? Yes. Um, I mean, does it require some kind of special treatment in order to to make it work on all these kind of? I mean, you have you have electro toner, you have dry toner, you have offset, you have I mean, right. inkjet, right. you have whatever you need. So, can you tell me a little bit exactly. about that? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, I think it's been one of the forte's, one of the real strong points of Scotix that we kept all our polymer, our inks, if we want to say that, as an in-house development. We have our own laboratory. And we really believe that, you know, the hardware is one aspect of this, but the chemistry aspect is equally, if not more important. And we started, of course, quite naturally in looking for compatibility with uh, electro-based inks in terms of... Uh, uh, in That's a indigo. large uh, installed yeah. base, right? <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a neighbor very close to us, uh, you know, oh, really? know Indigo mm. very well. <laughs> so um, great compatibility with HP Indigo, which is very natural to do. But actually, for us as well, very good compatibility with offset printed sheets as well. We have a very similar, we talk, it's all about surface energy. Mm. Um, you know, we might call it, we might talk about the dyne level of the inks. Um, but really, it's all about making sure that we have a compatibility to those surface energy levels. Mm. And actually, over the years, what we decided to do was we said, look, we have a range of our inks and our polymers which are doing 80% of the things 80% of the time. So mm -hmm. they fit what most customers want to do. However, there's always someone that says, I want to be outside of that range, lower or higher. I want to could, print higher. Could be me. Could be me. I'm yeah. always trying to, to <laughs> be the provocateur. <laughs> you know, or maybe I want to print on a toner-based production mm -hmm. uh, where the surface energy levels are quite a bit lower. And mm -hmm. we actually have the ability to develop those additional and speciality products. Now, one thing which is really relevant, and we announced it yesterday, I think it fits very tightly for this, is we've worked a lot in the last few months with Canon. Mm. Canon, but as you can know, I just can I just yeah, interrupt you because uh, two things. Uh, first of all, uh, Carl Nolan is uh, I think he's from uh, Canon. Yeah, he is. Uh, al already mentioned this in the chat. But another yes. thing I can't help think about, and that was like since you are so, uh, with the tension that you just spoke about, the surface right. tension. Yes. Why is why is why is it a particular announcement for you to announce the collaboration with with Canon? I mean, isn't that just another device? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's like everything, especially in digital processes, we, you know, we need to go through a kind of compatibility testing phase. And if we look, especially now Canon is there with the IX range of technology, um, they had the former technology, now they jumped, made a big jump last year with the 3200 and 2000 presses. Yeah. And we needed to make sure that we had good compatibility with that uh, chemistry, both from our side and from their side. So we did a lot of extensive testing. And we got some super, super results, just exactly the kind of things you're seeing on the screen there. They produced a very nice sample kit. I think it went out just before um, just before Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we're extending that collaboration and we'll test more of our applications with them. You know, and it's really we want to be sure that if we say this is going to work, that a customer can print with, you know, Canon IX3200, take it to his Scotix equipment and get a really, really excellent result. And that we can see today. You know, we have a really nice example of a customer in the Netherlands. And, you know, they have the two presses side by side. Sheets come out of the Canon press straight into the into the Scotix Ultra. Superb results. Yeah. When Super you say important. straight into, is it like an, an, an uh, inline solution? No, I it's mean... a near line. It's a near okay. line okay. situation. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's one of the things we need to consider because not everything in anybody's factory will ever be enhanced. Mm. You know, the enhancement probably will always be five to 20% of what somebody may produce. So they mm. still want to produce regular CMYK work mm. um, and then use the enhancement for the bits where they can, you know, the, the part of the business they can charge more for. Mm. So then I guess it's difficult, sorry, to say um, that volume, what kind of comes off, because it all depends what you're doing with it. Um, but it's sort of, I mean, how do you how do you measure that when you're selling this? How do you, how does somebody, a printer, look at it and go, you know, mm. what? how does he work out his ROI? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, again, it comes very much back to segments, because if we go to the extremities of a, of a, of a B2C Web2 model, then they might be producing items of one. You know, we have customers yeah, which, are, which are in that field. They produce everyday items of one sheet. 
maybe the average is 20 sheets production, but they produce volumes of jobs. You know, we have a customer, I can call him today and he will tell me he made 5,000 jobs today. Oh, really? So he's, okay. he's, he's yeah. not interested in number of sheets, he's interested in number of jobs. Yeah. So I mean, that's where we need to switch because I grew up from a mentality where more sheets means more money. Mm. Uh -huh. And I can remember many years ago, that a customer when I said to him, well, how do you how do you justify making such an investment? And he went over to the door, opened it, and he said, if I hear the printing press running, I'm making money. <laughs> now, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> exactly. Now, the same guy I went back to five years later told me, just because it's running doesn't mean to say I'm making as much money as I could do. <laughs> you know? And it changes. Yeah. It changes. Absolutely. Mm. Um, before I have some questions about technology, but before we move into that yes. uh, that uh, part of it, uh, obviously I think that both uh, I, I mean our viewers can of course see uh, the the beautiful print samples, and this is I would say that's actually print samples that uh, our filmer Jan has made uh, when we've been visiting customers. Uh, right. We have been with I think we made four customer testimonial films for you guys now. Yes. Uh, yes. And all of them have been very different and, and very different approaches to both uh, what they offer and how they offer it. I mean, we have uh, one of the, uh, the, the 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 customers we visited uh, before the. It was actually during the the, the pandemic. It was with in in uh, before Christmas. We went to La Mefactur in uh, mm, Germany. Right. Yes. And uh, I, I just want to sh tell about that story because it's quite interesting. Because you have a company that for twenty years have lived off actually doing nothing but lamination of right. uh, as a as a uh, as a partner with the printing companies right and and uh, as part of that their their uh, the new generation taking over the company um um one of the things that they wanted to think in you know, is how where where do we take our business to the next level right. and uh, i think actually uh, because france and i was also discussing i think that that uh, you know you never you I mean, to be honest, we don't expect to see a Skoda Express in every printing facility in Europe, right? right. <laughs> uh, so the fact that Lamifactur invested in this to offer this service to uh, uh, to other parties, it must also be quite exciting for you because that is a kind of acceptance level to to uh, becoming a, a part of bindering and external finishing department. I, do you get me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, mm. it's exactly why we've we hear this many times that people actually refer to, you know, one of our samples, they'll hold something up and they'll say, I, I, I need Skodix here. And whether they're talking about our effect or any other kind of effect, Skodix becomes the, the kind of Hoover terminology <laughs> that people use, where they use the brand instead of the process name. Mm, yeah. And that's absolutely used um, within many companies. There's even a company in the UK which has named his uh, company, which is actually Skodify, you know, oh, really? <laughs> Skodify really? something. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. 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 So that, that's happened quite a lot. And people do associate that, whether it's a high build uh, UV, clear UV or a special foil effect. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they really do understand that and they, they associate it with Skodix. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Great work and great. I mean, uh, were you the first to do this in digital? I can't remember. Yeah. I mean, uh, when Ellie and our other co-founder, Kobe Barr, developed that in 2008. And uh, what was really nice in the last Drupal, I remember those things we used to go to, Morton and Jean Drupal. It was a show in Dusseldorf. Oh, you know, yeah. we, uh, we're, we're missing those sausages, those Frankfurter sausages right now. Yeah, no, that's that's a, that's the only that's the only thing I don't miss. You don't miss. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. So in the 2012 last event, they had the prototype of the machine that they built in. I think it was Kobe's garage, um, and it was a you know really small little device single inkjet head, simple uh, little uh, UV unit, and a small conveyor underneath. You know, very much a kind of a Steve Jobs type uh, setup that they had working in the We all started garage. in a garage. <laughs> Some, everything starts in a garage, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. exactly. So um, one of the other things was yesterday we were discussing with PET um, yep. samples. Yes. And I do a lot of training, and I get shocked at how – Many print shops I walk into and these salespeople do not have a toolbox of samples. This must, this must be, I mean, this is, you cannot have, you cannot try and even explain Skodex without a whole range of samples. But I mean, correct, this must correct. be obviously at a huge cost um, because that is exactly what's going to drive somebody to buy it or not, correct? It, it is. You know, we have our, uh, we usually have our annual uh, design awards. And in our design awards, we have multiple categories. 
categories, and one of those is self-promotion. Um, and as we'll be announcing that, I think it's on the 4th of March. Robert will kill me if I get the date wrong, but I think it's 4th of March. We did all the judging recently, everything's done, but self-promotion within it is a big part of that. And the self-promotion is exactly that, but it's amazing you know, how many of our customers, especially in graphic arts, don't promote themselves, in my opinion, well enough. You know, again, we all have business cards, so why can't your business cards look uh, beautiful and amazing? You know, exactly. you, have to you have to communicate my name and my number, but beyond that, they should be really, really nice, especially in our industry. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, uh, that you know, is exactly, that's the first impression. And that, absolutely. That's, that is what you're selling. If you're selling that, that yep. should be on the business card because there's your yep. sample. I mean, that's in your face. It's just that's it. That's it. amazing. You know, uh, you know, we've just gone to a round of making a new set of brochures for the company with all the new products we just spoke about that we launched a few months ago. And that brochure has to be kind of knock, you know, knock them dead. You have to put the brochure down and that has to be everything about Skodix in just a few pieces of paper. Mm. You know, you've got to be able to you tell like, that story. You, you all like the IKEA catalog though, because everybody wants it and you want to keep it on your coffee table. So I know right, that when I was right, trying to get a sample at Drupal, forget yeah. it. I mean, you yeah, visually yeah, exactly. try to pay somebody that had one in their head because that yeah, was, absolutely. Oh, wow, everybody yes. wanted one. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. Um, you are not alone in the market when it comes to beautification. Um, That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have made films from uh, Steinem and we have made a film from MGI with the Alpha Jet. We have made yes. film from uh, uh, from um, uh, a lot of different companies uh, working in this segment. Um, and I was just wondering from a competitive perspective, I mean, you know, when we talk with the vendors of the inkjet presses, uh, you know, I was so stupid that in the beginning I asked, so guys, um, are you replacing toner? And they were like, no, 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 it's way bigger. We are replacing offset. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so they were basically uh, talking about that, uh, that the development of uh, inkjet technology actually supported that trend uh, rather than replacing and competing too much with each other. Is right. it similar in the, in the, in the digital enhancement? I mean, uh, uh, both uh, you and MGI and, and the others in the market, do you support a need for uh, basically extending the market for understanding the, the high uh, ROI opportunities in print? I, I, I still really believe that because, you know, at the end of the day, we are still representing a very minor part of the entire enhancement uh, opportunity, which is out there. Whether that's people doing laminations, enhancement, embossing, special varnishes, there's a lot of it out there today. Mm. So every time they, anybody buys any digital enhancement press, we're confirming the market. There's a mm. confirmation of that. I kind of always see it like the royal stamp of, of approval. You know, mm. Gene knows that from the UK market where we see this little crest from the Queen. You have it in Denmark <laughs> as well, if I remember uh, as well. Uh, more. Yeah, we do. And, and it's a kind of confirmation that this thing is real. It exists. And uh, and it's something credible that we should really look at whether it's solution A, B or C is a different discussion. And we can talk all day, which is better than another. another. But at the end of the day, it is a another step towards a digitization of a, of a process. And you know what? At the end of the day, we will never I don't believe it'll be 100 percent because there will still be needs in mm. special areas. We're still at the early stages. We've become complementary now. Mm. Eventually, we'll become more dominant. And mm. that takes time. Yeah. So that takes time. I can tell you a little anecdote before I go back to the Scotics because I, it just yes. reminded me about something. And that was, uh, uh, I think it's maybe 10 years ago, something that I went to a printing company and they were actually doing the business cards for the Queen of Denmark. Oh, wow. And, and uh, basically it was called steel print. And uh, what they did was basically uh, they had the dies that were like three dimensional kind wow. of thing. Yeah. So they had like for her business card, I think they had seven different uh, heights of the yes, die. Yes, can imagine. Can and imagine. they had a color that was added to every business if, card on one. top of it. So the colors wow. were like seven layers of uh, a 3D embossing kind of thing. Can imagine. And then every layer had its own color. color. It was Amazing. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I can't yeah. imagine how much the 250 business cards would have cost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good to be queen, eh? Good yeah. to be queen. Good to Absolutely. be queen. Yeah, you're the queen of South Africa, aren't you, Gene? <laughs> 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 and now, uh, getting back to to uh, to the business, because I think that you know, um, if we look at digital enhancement, you know, every time I have produced a print where I used uh, uh, um, it could be from spot spot varnish uh, to uh, hot foils to whatever kind of technology in the analog world, 
I was also when the design was delivered to the printing company, they all said, "Don't don't put this foil in the in the in the folding, or uh, don't do this because it cracks, or uh, all these kind of things." Limitations. Uh, the limitations of what you can right. do from a designer's yeah. perspective. Yes. Uh, how uh, ag agile is uh, is uh, Scodex in that perspective? I, I think, to be honest, surprisingly, surprisingly good. Um, you know, my my background coming from packaging, really focused in packaging, and and focusing for the first four years in Scodex in packaging, it teaches you something quite different about print. And, mm -hmm. and again, I, I kind of use these slightly provocative uh, references. <laughs> That's okay. You know, if, if, if I if I make a business card and you can read my name and number, it did its job. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I now make a folding carton, and it doesn't deliver the product inside safely, the outside isn't scratched. It didn't go very well on the folding and gluing line. It mm -hmm. wasn't erected properly. Mm -hmm. It didn't do its job. So now this product has a functional performance mm. as well as a communicative performance. Yeah, get and that. So due to our early drive to get into packaging, it's taught us how to have an abrasion resistance for foils, for example. Yep. It's taught us how to have an ability to think about managing foils and enhancement around crease lines, um, on cutting lines, and all of these different functional requests. Because when we try to replace analog processes, which have been there for many, many years, they've overcome that over many years. And we have to do it now much more quickly. Mm. So due to the drive into packaging and industrialized products, that's helped us a lot. You know, I, I think, if, if, does that answer your question? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah because, I mean, if if, uh, if it doesn't work, it will not be, uh, it will not serve its purpose. purpose. So, I mean, uh, you, you may have, you may have to make workarounds in with any technology, but so is it with, if you, if you save on inks uh, on, on your offset presses, you will also have issues. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so the, the, maybe the best example I can give you of that is the fact that we very recently launched, you know, all of, all of these foils we see here, we know that underneath it, in order to make it stick, we have the Scodex polymers. Yeah. And the Scodex polymers are a UV polymer. But if we want to produce something, I'm looking around if I have one, I don't have anything here. But if it was a food packaging, for example, I now need to consider aspects like low migration. Mm -hmm. I need to have low migration polymers or inks. And that's something we launched a couple of months ago because mm -hmm. many of our customers we saw earlier, for example, on the video, the Mercy chocolate box that you saw yeah, actually in yeah, traffic yeah, yeah. in the northeastern part of Germany. Precisely, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if we want to have food safe products, we need special polymers. So yeah. it's understanding of that need in the market and then how to achieve it as well, which takes quite some time. Yeah. We uh, we had a wonderful session with uh, Hans Porting uh, from I think from MPS. Uh, yeah. Tuesday, uh, the last session Tuesday, yes. and uh, it was quite interesting in relation to you when you mentioned uh, food compliance. You said that I mean you can have a you, you can you can talk about the Nestle food compliance, which is not like an official standard, but which is their standard Correct. kind of thing. Yeah, and um, I was just, and he said, uh, and uh, Gene, correct me if I remember wrong, but as far as I remember, he he said that there is no one. Food compliance basically depends on the application and Correct. how. And so, when you say low migration, that is, of course, good. <laughs> yes. But but it, but I mean, to, to be honest, to uh, everybody considering buying uh, also a, a, a Scott Express, uh, the low migration will still require that each application you do using Scotix in relation to food compliance will need to get a, a certified specifically for that product, right? Yeah, I mean, it really depends on the brand owner's requests, as there's no yeah. legal standard for this. Okay, so there's no legal standards for it. There's okay. no legal standard, so it's really mm. down to um, what a, a brand owner would decide he would want. Ah, okay. Um, I thought know, it so was actually by legal standards that there was no, like... No, there's no okay. definition in that sense, and that's why we have this ambiguity around Nestle standards, Swiss ordinance. Yeah, uh, precisely. Yeah, the, yeah. You know, um, what is it? UEPA, the European Printing Ink Association, have another yeah. definition. Yeah. Um, so there's a degree of ambiguity and a brand owner A might choose one standard and brand owner B might choose a different standard. Mm. In the end, what we always say is, look, we produce a low migration ink, worked mm. within the parameters we can provide you, it will co conform to that, uh, to that statement. Mm. If a customer wants to test it independently, he can do that and we would recommend that he does that. You know, mm. that's, that's the way we work with them to do it. When I look at uh, Scodex, I mean, uh, no question that the quality is 
is brilliant. Uh, no mm -hmm. quality that uh, also your marketing has worked very, very well in relation to bringing that experience and, and, and emotions to the market. Yes. Uh, I also think when I look at the presses, they are pretty fast. But mm -hmm. I also still think to some extent that if we look at mass production, yes, like really big volumes, yes. Uh, yes. speed is still an issue when it comes to that. Is that something that Skodex is thinking of addressing at some point? Or do you see Skodex more as side by side with analog when it comes to larger um, Deliveries? No, I, I, I think, you know, you're, you're right to point it out and it's it's reality, you know, you can't uh, hide uh, these topics. I mean, let's be honest. You can I try, can stand... but it doesn't work for me. <laughs> no, it doesn't work very well. You know, one of, my, one of my colleagues that Gene knows very well, Mark, um, always uses the reference of you can't hide the elephant in the room. And you can't, you know. Uh, when you stand next to an offset press, which is capable of printing at 20,000 sheets an hour, it's probably quietly churning out 16,000 sheets an hour. <laughs> Uh, it, and it's just a walk in the park for an, a, a modern offset press. Then it's clear that we have a, you know, we have room for improvement. I would put it like this. Mm. Um, As does everybody. As does everybody. Eh? Yeah, exactly. yeah, but it's, you know. but I was, I was thinking more in perspective whether you experience a demand for this because I mean I take that you're using the the Rubrico print heads in yeah, in your right. device. And, you know, stupid me, but I'm just saying that if you wanted to go faster, you can just put in more print heads, couldn't you? You can, absolutely. <laughs> you know, you yeah. can, there's many things you can do in that sense. Our focus has really been about getting, first of all, having wow effects, having that stable technology. Tick. Wow is done. Stable <laughs> technology is done. By the way, we produced in seven weeks before Christmas, our three of our customers in the peak season, just running up when they do the holiday cards in North America produce 50 million holiday cards um so very stable so we have so, stability so what about uh, the 350 million americans that didn't get a scodex card i don't know maybe next they're year. maybe next they're year. looking for one next year yeah <laughs> so that's that's again that's that opportunity so what about i mean so when you do your roi with a printer you sit down yeah. with him i mean when you sell an inkjet press normally he's got to have a certain amount of volume to that's enter right. the market what I mean, if you look at the markets you kind of go for, I mean, do you sit there with a the client and go, you know, I mean, obviously you got to know which market he's going for, but is there yes. a minimum sort of volume where, you know, you've got a market here, it's secure, and this is, nobody wants a white elephant. So what right. I'm saying is, right. how do you, how do you put an ROI together for a printer? What are the key things that they need to think so about? If they we, want to we, build it, we build it on three pillars. One of the pillars is, you know, can we take some of the things he does today and replicate? Can we take some things that he does today and make more sophisticated? And thirdly, what are the things he doesn't do today, but he could win with our technology? Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of three pillars we tend to focus on. Um, and we, you know, we, depending on his segment, um, it will really depend on what's most relevant to him. Again, if we talk about the extremities of a Web2 model, where you're able to build a lot of value to an end user to a, in a B2C, then actually you could, we have customers which are running with few hours per week and having a very good justification. In the rest of the world, where people are running general commercial work or they're running general packaging, they need a certain amount of volume. And ideally, you know, the lower the run lengths, the more they fit to a digital technology and inkjet technology. Sure. So, you know, one of our presses today, our standard B2 presses, they, they, you know, they have a capability of producing around 3 million sheets as, as an 80% okay. utilization. So that's a, a good capacity already. Um, but most of our customers are probably in the range of, let's say, from about 800,000 sheets to 1.5 million sheets. That's probably the average range, I would say, yeah. Mm. Um, getting back to the starting point where we spoke a little bit about mm. uh, the, the added value to the to the... Uh, the everybody's involved in it um how difficult is it i mean that talk track i think that when you and i talk and gene talk about it, when france and i talk about it uh, mm. it makes a lot of sense uh but i still think that if, I, I i don't know the acquisition cost of a scodex but it looks like a it it looks like something that is more expensive than this uh, pair of headsets here to be honest right it is unfortunately yes. <laughs> yeah so i was just wondering um when you when you have the conversation with the with the potential buyers of this uh, this codex, uh, regardless of what of the of the versions you're think, thinking of selling, right? Um, how difficult is it to get into conversations about the ROI and the value creation that that uh, Scodex can offer to these customers? In your opinion, 
Uh, it, you know, it can be challenging. It's very much down to the mentality of the individual customer. Mm. Uh, it, it really comes down to how risk averse somebody is. If I'm saying, you know what, I can fill that machine with work you already have, and mm. I'll show you how efficiently I can do that. Mm. That's a kind of no brainer in a sense, yeah. assuming yeah. we can prove everything we say we can do. Yeah. If I say you should buy one of these because of all these wonderful things you can do, that's quite high risk. That's speculative investment all of a sudden. <laughs> and what we try to do is you remember the old volume buttons on the old uh, audio systems with zero and 10. Mm -hmm. You know, if I put it at five in the middle, I'm trying to understand is this gentleman, you know, or this person more interested in an investment of replacement or more about value add? It's always a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. And quite often, there'll, always, there'll be a little gap. And what's the gap? And are they able to make that step based upon they need to make such a decision? You spoke about la mi facture, mm -hmm. and you spoke about that generational change from the father to the son. Mm -hmm. And it's clear that Yannick, uh, mm -hmm. that you, you met when you were up there, wanted mm -hmm. to bring a difference to the company and make his change in the direction and mm -hmm. bring something new. And that mm -hmm. sometimes might be all it is in that sense. Mm -hmm. So that can sometimes help in that way, yeah? Uh, just a, a short thing here because uh, Paul Franklin, he has actually uh, posted a link to Flint Group about food packaging brochure with uh, September. So I think that is maybe referring to the, the food compliance that we spoke Perfect. about earlier. So that is, uh, is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and I also want to say that Carl Nolan also sent a link if you want to see a film. Uh, which you cannot see because it's not on Inky, so that doesn't work. No, it's... Okay. That's no. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we are, you know, uh, to be honest, we, we have worked hard to become a monopoly. It still doesn't really work for us. <laughs> <laughs> some, some, as we say, room for improvement. Yeah. <laughs> room for improvement, yeah, definitely. Um, um, the, when you have a generation shift like you just announced here, uh, yes. how yes. long time does a generation often last in, in, in the digital print space? Because, I mean, I think obviously some people might think, okay, I go and buy a machine now. Is it something that is uh, obsolete within 10 minutes or, or what to expect? It's a good point. It's a good point, you know, because we come from a legacy of, you know, engineered products, heavy metal, let's say, which we can still go around the industry and find 20, 30, 40 year old pieces of equipment still doing a very good job today. Yeah. Now we talk about software upgrades. We talk about changing GUIs, you know, user interfaces and many, many different things, things which move at a totally different pace. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if I take our press, for example, we can, with changing of softwares and changing parts on the press, bring something which is doing something very, very different. So it does move much faster and there is a difference and it is a change for us as, uh, as I suppose I class myself as a bit of an old gear head. You know, somewhere in there, there's gears and not so many bits and bytes. Um, you know that it's uh, that we have to make those changes. And uh, I, I like to say, if I have one passion in this life and one thing I want to achieve in the next 15 years, it's just that people say I was part of that digital transformation. And if I contribute a tiny amount to it, I'll be happy. You know, so that mm. that's my goal in life. And uh, and I well, think that thank you for achieving it. Yeah, I think with Skodix, we're doing a good job of that. We're making very good steps into it. And with people like Ellie and Kobe uh, behind the company, mm. you know, we have uh, we have that vision, you know, in mm. order to do that as well. Yeah, mm. which is good. good. Well, I think it's about time to close this uh, discussion here. Uh, sure, sure. We have tried to involve uh, the questions from the, the people that have asked anything. So if... Uh, Guys who are attending, uh, shoot if you have questions for Nigel. Absolutely. I think it was a great session talking to Nigel. I said I said to Dean I was a little bit nervous because I sent both you and Robert a lot of mails and then I didn't hear so much back from you to be honest. So we had to we had to figure out if you got anybody. It could have been strange to be sitting here just Dean and me talking about just Scottish, talking right? just talking about Scottish thanks Nigel because I would have had to do a song and dance and uh, you know, that's okay that's okay yeah. Yeah. I leave that to the professionals. Hmm. Well, you know, we, yeah, it's, um, I, I, I guess busy days in a, in a funny kind of way. It's really it's odd to say that we are. I don't know how efficient we are these days, but we're certainly very busy. Mm. Um, efficiency is a discussion. Probably, I hope we'll look back on and laugh in in the future. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's different. Our working days and our working structure to a day is certainly mm. very different than it was twelve months ago. Yeah. Mm. Uh, did so. Did you know? Did you, I'm sorry. I just have uh, to uh, bolster my ego. So, did you know about English before this session here? 
I did, yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, very much, very much. Yeah. I mean it's uh it's you know, I think it's something that the industry I think English is something the industry's been lacking, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think we needed something which was uh looking at our industry from a slightly different way, uh being a little provocative and uh critical at times because you know, we spend a lot of the time patting ourselves on the back, saying how good we are at doing things. And that was exactly you know? what I was trying to do with myself right now, patting myself, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So that's right. so that is you know? why. <laughs> fantastic. You hired, Nigel, uh, you hired. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay that's fine. No, I, I would say that it's uh, to just to give a little bit back on that one, because uh, it I can I, I can tell you that it took a lot of years to get involved with Codex. Uh, we have made a lot of films from shows where we have presented your equipment but yes. it took us some while to get into a relationship with you guys and I, I must say that it's been wonderful to get to know you as well because uh, mm -hmm. as a company I think that uh, I mean maybe you're a little close and I think that sometimes Israeli companies mm -hmm. are a little bit you know but when you get yeah, yeah, inside sure. it but when sure. you get in it's almost like being part of a family so uh, yeah, it's, I it's really then, appreciate it. Then it's yeah. addictive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is very yeah. addictive yeah and um uh, I know for sure that uh, next time we're going to Israel, we have uh, we have not planned anything yet, but uh, uh, we want to go and, and visit Skodex as we have done sure. with other Israeli companies. It could be wonderful. And as yes. you know, we're also going to make a film from an American customer in in yep. the next couple of next, weeks. Next week, next uh, is next week or the week after, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I have not got the dates yet. <laughs> no, that's okay. We're still we're still uh, we're still finalizing a couple of things, and uh, yeah, we will. We'll but we'll have a testimonial coming from North America. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a number of good installations during the last few months some you know we always said if we look at our definitions we remember we i spoke about this in three pillars commercial mm -hmm. printing mm -hmm. uh, we spoke about packaging and web 2 commercial for us is even commercial and speciality and speciality is anything other than the regular commercial print guys the psps mm -hmm. and we have some pretty good success in some of these niche areas where people are doing some fairly weird and wonderful things actually yeah so it's um you know this hopefully that's going to be one of the stories we'll be able to talk about sounds great, great. are you Just, sorry do you, do, are you one question are your big focus um do you have a team that go out and promote this to brand owners and agencies or is it very much you rely on print service providers to do that to be honest it's a bit of a combination although predominantly it's more the latter you know we're okay. still a small company mm -hmm. and uh, i always tend to think it's like pushing the titanic if we want to get success with the major brands and, and we're just not big enough to be able to do that. We can do certain key activities where we might have a particular connection or there's a project link already connected, created through a customer. Then as we can bring value to that. And we yes. have done it also in the past, but do it as a general process. Uh, if I had 30 million uh, marketing budget, I would do it immediately. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, let me give you one advice then. Uh, on a, It's actually a free advice, both from my side, but also the, the opportunity sure. that could get sure. out of it is uh, basically uh, uh, Monday, we had a wonderful session with uh, Isla Monroe from the Dragonfly mm. Agency in Scotland. And right, right. Uh, one of the things that she actually said in her session was that every time there's a new technology, new opportunities, reach out to the DMAs yes, uh, yes. Uh, because they are the ones that can push that technology to work it's so true. so sometimes it may not even have very big budgets because i think that there's an ex there's to some extent i think that people are looking for yeah. for opportunities to create something that stands out from the from the uh, commodity and i think that you you should be in a position to do that so that yes. that is a that's free good. lead to, to follow that's up good. on that's good that's good I <laughs> yeah. appreciate and it's that. true Morton, because i know working with gmas in the past sometimes yeah. they have an event and they want to sponsor you know, they want you to sponsor, let's say, an invitation for the event. And with that, you get an hour to talk to all the brand owners at the event right. and show them your right. product. So yeah. a lot of these, you know, I think even for DMAs, they're trying to get print closer to, you know, so there's just so many opportunities that don't cost money, you know. Yep. So yeah, as Morgan said, reach out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, a final note here uh, mm -hmm. from uh, is actually because we have a one hour break now. And Gene right. and I, we spoke about uh, doing a session on our own, talking about like a follow up on uh, the entire week. 
-hmm. but we didn't have time to plan it, so we have no uh, pre-registered people at all, Gene. But I think that what we and should do. And I didn't bring the bubbles. I didn't bring the bubbles. Yeah. So <laughs> what I think we should do, and uh, I'm sorry that I involve you in this, uh, Nigel, but it's, I'm just no saying that what we should do is basically take all the replays because there's a lot of replays from this week, and then take a little fraction of these, and then we can make a, an offline film where we could co comment on these things, and maybe that could be a good takeaway for a, a very interesting week and. Uh, I want to thank you, Nigel, again. I think it was wonderful to have you here. And uh, Fantastic. yeah, and um, thank you. now uh, thank you. Carl, Carl Nolan is asking, when will this week's webinars be on your website, Morton? Okay, we have to answer that as well. Actually, if you go to news right now, uh, all the sessions from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are actually uh, available as replays. Unfortunately, when you replay in the webinar jam platform we're using right now, you have to see end-to-end. -end. You can't fast-forward in it. So mm -hmm. Jan has downloaded all of them. We have edited them. Uh, for me, it's just to upload them to uh, to Inkish TV. And I hope I will have time to do that over the weekend. We are going, uh, actually, Jan and I are traveling next week. We are going to um, uh, cover a very interesting customer for HP in France. Mm. Uh, very interesting. And then we're going to Germany to do five films with Horizon uh, showcasing their equipment Super. on Thursday. So, uh, well, that was listen, a little... I was reading all the mails back from every all the sponsors that we've had this week. And I think you're going to be filming all over the world in the next couple of weeks and months because you're in the world at the moment. I think, so. the I think so. I, I hope because otherwise I will be uh, without any money. So that is needed. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, guys and uh, Nigel and the audience, uh, wonderful to see you and wonderful to talk to you. Thank you very much. And uh, remember to be back. The last session is in one hour and that was the MBO North America. It's actually maybe also interesting in a Skodex perspective because this is mm -hmm. uh, the, the the one of the companies that is uh, invited. I can't remember the name of the company, but Dave Johannes, who is the owner and CEO of the, of the company, uh, is working in a company where they are 100% specialized in servicing the, uh, the charity market. And mm. it's a company with 3,000 employees. So mm -hmm. I think there's a, and that, and that is to put that in perspective, we have, uh, another MBO customer who have 12 employees and they have the same equipment for a special binding uh, thing that MBO offers. Amazing. So that is just to show the diversity of the MBO offering. So I think That's and good. hope that uh, some of you will uh, will join Eugene and me. Uh, I think we will be uh, exhausted and maybe a little bit more cheerful than we have been the rest we of the week. We will be fine. We've got an hour's break. We'll we be fine. We've got an hour's yeah. break and then we'll yeah. be full of energy again. That's true. Excellent. Excellent. Have a wonderful weekend, Great. everybody, and talk to you. Yeah. Take Great. care. Thanks, just, guys. Just...